Hello and welcome to the utility precast training session. Today we're going to be modeling a single barrel culvert run. So let's jump right in. Up here in our concrete ribbon, we're going to hold shift and click on the beam. That's going to bring up these properties on the side. I'm going to load in culvert. You probably do not have this drop down by default, but that's okay. Just follow uh, kind of along and type these in as we go. So the name is going to be culvert. Uh, the profile we're going to select from these three dots right here. This is going to bring up, bring open our profile catalog. All the way down at the bottom, under other, you have to expand this tree, and then uh, down here at the bottom, you'll see uh, the Cove One profile with a picture describing all the different inputs here. So if we step through this, our total width is going to be 180. Total height is going to be 120. Our standard wall thicknesses are going to be 10. The base thickness is going to be 12. Top thickness is going to be 12. And then our X and Y haunch dimensions are going to be 12. Press apply and okay. And then make sure your other settings are set here, the 5,000 PSI concrete, class 13, and then all of your position tabs are reading the same as well. We're just going to go down to any grid intersection. Doesn't really matter for this purpose. I'm going to go to B and three. I'm going to single click, I'm going to single left click, hold my cursor to the right, and type in six feet, and press enter. And then you'll notice my culvert drops in. Anytime you see this crosshair in Tecla, this means that the, a command is still active. So you can either press escape on your keyboard, or you can right click interrupt to end the command. So if we just take a look at what we have here, we have just a basic culvert with those uh, properties that we put in earlier. what we need to do is we need to create the joint detail here. So same process, click this drop down, and we're going to select the poly beam by holding shift and clicking. I'm going to load in my joint details. Again, you won't have this drop down, but just copy these settings here. Uh, we're going to name this beam joint. And then here is the profile. And this profile, if we click the three dots, is under others and then various shapes. It's this TRPZL profile, and you're going to input 5, 5, and 4. And uh, basically what we're going to do here is, and then press apply, okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to basically draw um, or model along this edge a poly beam, which is basically a continuous beam, and then we're going to use that to cut it away to create our joint detail. Also, you're going to want to pay attention to the position tab. Make sure that your positions are set just like I have left for on plane, rotation to back, and that depth to behind. So I'm going to start here at the midpoint and click around my covert section. Now, this part's very important. We don't want to close this poly beam. We want to come just short, and you'll see why here in a second. We're going to come just short and then middle mouse when we're done. So there's our poly beam dropped in. Once your poly beam is in, uh, you can turn on direct modification down here, or you can just press D on your keyboard. That does the same thing. We're going to single click on that poly beam. And I'm just going to click and drag this handle together. And the reason behind that is because Tecla does some kind of uh, weird things. If you if you try to just connect those as one circular element first, you have to somewhat trick it there and then close it afterwards. So what we're going to do now is come to the edit command, and we're going to do a part cut. And I'm going to turn my DM off. So once you have the part uh, cut command selected, you'll notice the crosshairs. First, we're going to select our main part, which is the culvert. Second, we're going to select is this poly beam that we just created. In doing so, you should see something similar to what I have here, and you should see these dashed lines around. That is your cut that you've just made. So now we no longer need this poly beam. I can single click on the poly beam and press delete on my keyboard. You'll notice as I rotate around here what we've done, we've just created that uh, that male joint of the culvert section. And it's all the way around, and it's basically a five by five with a one inch skew to it. So now with that in there, now we need to create the opposite side. And the easiest way to do this is by single clicking. We need to create the, the female end to accept this joint. The easiest way to do that is to single click on my culvert and come to copy special linear. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click this uh, corner up here, and then I'm gonna click the opposite corner here. You'll notice it inputs five foot seven, but I'm gonna account for a half inch um, kind of joint slash erection gap there. So I'm just gonna add 
a 0.5 after that. My number of copies to one and press copy. You notice as soon as I press copy, this secondary shape uh, pops in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come here to our edit tab. And we're going to do a part cut. And this is going to be our, our item we want to cut. And then our previous piece is going to be the cutting part. And you'll notice when I do that, if I just hide this piece away for a second, by doing so, we've created the female end. So we basically used our other piece to cut the female end in, and then now we have the male end in. So now this piece here is essentially uh, what we want to use for our culvert run. So just by clicking in the background, right click and redraw, I can get that piece back. I'm going to click on this secondary piece that has the, the both the male and the female joints in there. And then I'm going to copy special linear. Now it's already going to have these uh, my same inputs in there, which is what I want. Now I'm going to come here to number of copies, and I'm just going to copy it 10 times. Now see, in doing so, we've basically uh, we've copied this over, and we've created our, our culvert run. Now, this very last piece in the culvert run typically will not have this joint, so you can just single click on your cut and press delete. And just like that, we have a culvert run. Now what we're going to do is we're going to model some wing walls here on the side. So to do so, I'm going to press Control p on my keyboard, which brings me to a bird's eye plan view. And I'm going to draw some establishing construction lines here. We're basically going to create some wing walls coming off of our corners at a 45 degree angle. So if I go to my edit tab and then construction object line, this will allow us to draw in some construction lines. So I'm going to click on this top left corner and I'm going to hold my mouse here. Um, you'll notice it, as you hold your mouse directly up, if you have ortho on, which is O on your keyboard, you'll find that it snaps to, you know, perfectly straight up. If I hold straight left, it'll give me orthogonal to the left. And likewise, if I hold right in the middle, it'll give me that nice 45. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it right in the middle, and I'm going to draw a 20-foot long construction line. And I'm going to do this at all of my corners, top right, and then now the bottom right, and then now the bottom left. You'll notice that as you zoom in and out there, your precision of these lines, as I draw this for an example, your precision will get tighter and tighter. So now I can go to the inches when I'm really zoomed in. If I'm zoomed out, now it's going to skip like five feet at a time, two feet at a time. So now with those uh, construction lines in, what we're going to do is we're going to come here to our, our wall panel. So go back to the concrete tab, shift click on the wall panel tab. And I'm going to load in my wing wall. Again, you will not have this, but just copy my settings here. I've got a wing wall, 120 by 12, which basically means it's 120 inches tall by 12 inches thick, 5,000 PSI in uh, class two. And then pay attention to the position tab, the on plane set to left, rotation to top, the add depth to front. Um, I'm basically going to go around here and I'm going to model in my wall sections. So I'm going to start with this guy here, click the first point, click the second point, and middle mouse. Rinse and repeat. Click the first point, click the second point, middle mouse. First point, second point, middle mouse. Now this one uh, is a little different because we were having this left offset, so we actually want to start from this corner, finish in that corner, and then middle mouse. You'll notice that all of the walls are extending, you know, to the to the inside of the barrel, so nothing is hanging um, in in you know to the interior of the barrel. So with those walls in, if we just rotate around to kind of see what we have, now we have our wing walls in. Pressing Control P back to Plan View, I'm going to come up here to my slab, concrete slab, shift click on that. I have a drop down for wing wall slab, basically just the name wing wall slab and a 12 inch thickness. And what I'm going to do here is basically draw the slabs that are underneath the wing wall. So by clicking in this bottom left corner, holding my mouse uh, kind of up and to the right, you'll find that orthogonal point. I'm going to have a six foot wide by 20 foot long 
slab. So I click, click the last point and then middle mouse, my slab will drop in. Hold my mouse over. Come up orthogonal, All right, 20 feet, six foot, middle mouse. Six feet orthogonal, 20 foot, six foot, middle mouse. And last one here, six foot, 20 foot, six foot, middle mouse. So just like that, we have our structure here in place. We have our wing wall at all four corners, and we have our single barrel covert run in. Next, we're going to jump into some detailing aspects.